It's your girl, VK Johanum, and today we are discussing a real-life Star Wars-based genocide cult on a quest for world domination. They are called Sith Academy. I came across these people a few years ago, and ever since I've Googled them like once or twice a year just to see what they're up to. Uh, recently, uh, I was drinking a lot, and I came up with the bright idea to actually buy their literature and review it on YouTube. So, here we are. Uh, originally, I was just going to do one video, which is going to be a review of this book, but I think it's best for both the YouTuber and the audience that I make two videos. One, introducing the Sith Academy. And the other, uh, doing a detailed review of the book. Because not only is this a hilarious thing that I want to share with you, uh, I'm kind of hoping that any potential or current followers of the Dark Lords might see this and maybe avoid the Sith current. Because <laughs> this is actually a very, very messed up ideology held by a quite predatory uh pair of people. The leaders are Darth Imperius and Darth Ravenous or Ravenous. Um, one remarkable quote from Darth Ravenous. Um, You'll know you're making real progress on the Sith path when you go from being suicidal to homicidal. Now, First things first, your name is Darth Raven Noose now. <laughs> Second off, not to shame depression or suicidality, but your cult, if you're leading a cult, your cult should not exclusively attract people who are actively experiencing suicidal ideation. That's awful and there's no excuse for it like a few suicidal people sure but if you're that if that's just the norm for what you're bringing in that's a massive massive red flag now the sith academy they disappear and resurface routinely they've had various uh versions of their website and various versions of their YouTube channel. They do have a YouTube channel now. Um, only has two videos, both of which were uploaded in 2019. But in the past, they had a pretty thriving YouTube channel. Um, in one video I watched, uh, <clears throat> one of the Dark Lords... Lords of what? Like, earned that title, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> lord of what? A fucking apartment? <laughs> I'm a lord of an apartment too, bitch. <laughs> Henceforth, I am Dark Lord Jahannam. Because I have an apartment. And some people watch me on YouTube. <laughs> um, so one of the old videos I saw <laughs> featured one of the Dark Lords. You can't tell which. You couldn't tell which because, you know, there was a hood, there was masks. And both of the uh, leaders are Caucasian. Um, and it was basically a, a Zoom call or a Skype call or something between one of the Dark Lords and one of the lower-ranked members. And the lower-ranked member was extremely uh, socially awkward and clearly very, very vulnerable. Depressed, of course, suicidal, as described. And... The lower ranked member was 100% the Dark Lord's bitch. Like, dead ass. 
his bitch. I mean, I've known you see... I know you've seen someone be another person's bitch at some point in your life, but not like this. It was honestly uh, jarring. Um, I'm just sad to see. I hope that a lower-ranked member has found a better way forward in life since that interview was conducted. The, the Sith Academy actually had a live ritual up back in the day. And yes, they actually use replica lightsabers in uh, fucking magical rituals. Um, they, would, they actually like appeared to be casting a circle by walking around, swinging around this lightsaber. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, the really, really badass martial artists or fencing experts who make, like, these really dope, you know, lightsaber videos with their fucking... You know, they're doing all that cool shit with the lightsabers. This was nothing like that. These two dorks were just walking about, waggling the fucking lightsabers back and forth. It was... Haha! <laughs> um... The lower-ranked member in that interview I told you about actually straight up, like, told off the Dark Lord for looking stupid as fuck, waggling about a red lightsaber before being quite promptly put back in line. Frankly, the Dark Lord should have listened to the newbie. Now it's time to uh, talk about the origin of Sith Academy. So... Sith Academy goes back to 2011, where one of the Dark Lords, who goes by Darth Imperius, was just chilling out in front of his computer, and he is under the impression that he had a telepathic conversation with a sorcerer from a parallel universe. And what he says is that this sorcerer was the last Sith Lord in a universe where Star Wars is real. So he refers to this person as Darth Omega. And apparently, there was a giant uh, space monster just exterminating the human race, or sentient life, in that universe. So Darth Omega... Uh, telepathically contacted Darth Imperius instructing him to carry on the Sith on this planet and then um, apparently he transmitted large amounts of spiritual knowledge and power to Darth Imperius um, which process Darth Imperius refers to as in darkenment and the Sith uh, of Sith Academy pursue fucking in darkenment that's another red flag by the way be wary of fucking spiritual teachers who are so dualistic that they're triggered by the word enlightenment and feel the need to use the word in darkenment like that's that's some real fucking autistic shit but so, Darth Imperius got his fucking ride-or-die homie, who is now Darth Ravenous, um, somehow involved, and the two of them have been trying to establish a real-life galactic empire in our universe for the last nine years. Now, black magical groups that quest after world domination usually fizzle out like cheap lighters and a lot of black magicians don't stay black magicians for very long the fact that these two dorks have actually remained Sith and have remained devoted to leading this cult for nine years is simultaneously impressive and sad but, yeah, that brings us to their ideology, their vision for the world. So first things first is they are 
Bitter Misanthropes. Uh, this book refers to the common people of this planet as unawakened, unambitious apes who are to be avoided whenever possible. This way of thinking will give the Sith Lord an air of the sinister, otherworldly mystic, a mystique he will cultivate deliberately to better seduce his allies and sow fear in his enemies. You do not have the mystique of an otherworldly mystic, Darth Imperius. You have the vibe of Elliot Roger. When people fear you, it's because they think you'll shoot a place up. Like, you aren't intimidating in some other sense. Like, these people who are fearing you would fight you. Um, so, on the Sith Academy's website, they got a derogatory comment uh, critiquing them for uh, not... for having beliefs that diverge from the fictitious Sith. And the Dark Lords responded saying that they have appropriated the Sith meme for their own purposes and that they do not seek to LARP or live in fantasy. But that is a lie that they are telling themselves and hoping that you will believe. Um, allow me to uh, read an excerpt of this book. It is a good viewpoint for a Sith to think of himself as a stranded superman crash landed on a primitive backwater planet called earth the sith is in this world but not of it an alien with with distant memories of a vastly greater life among the stars to which he longs to return so you are in fact living in fantasy and encouraged to do so What do y'all mean this is a good viewpoint to hold? Like, pretending you fucking crash-landed here? Like, Cal L or Superman? How is that a good viewpoint? In what way does that assist anybody except, you know, helping them escape the pain? <laughs> um, in addition to this, uh, Darth Ravenous claims to have channeled... Darth Revan, which is actually a specific fictional character from the extended Star Wars universe. Like Darth Sidious, but more obscure. Like, you're literally claiming to channel specific fictitious characters and pretending that you're a space alien. And you think it is advantageous to do so. Denying the fact that you are LARPing is an insult to your own intelligence and everyone else's. So this is not the first black magical collective I've seen strive for world domination. Others include, you know, O9A groups and offshoots, as well as the Cult of Cthulhu. Groups with this type of outset usually don't last very long. And all of them have made the exact <clears throat> same amount of tangible progress towards their goals, which is none. Um, it is genuinely quite impressive and quite sad that these people are still pursuing this. Because usually when a black magical group dedicates themselves to world domination. It's kind of like flipping an hourglass over. Like it's only a matter of time before the sand reaches the bottom and the cult has just disbanded. I hate sand. It's rough. It's coarse. It gets everywhere. Not like here. I'm going to read you another excerpt now. To the awakened mind, the Sith Orders of Legend are as real as any other. 
They simply exist in another part of the multiversal mind. No, they fucking don't. And don't hit me with the star killer line talking about, they're real to me. No, you are full of shit. You are spreading a fucked up LARPing delusion. So, to a significant extent, the Sith are influenced by, you know, standard LHP influences. Um, on an older version of their website, they had a PDF library that actually included um, the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey and a text from the Order of the Nine Angles. And this book quotes Michael Aquino, the founder of the Temple of Set. You know, some of the OG LHP movements in the West. And the influence of the Order of the Nine Angles on the Sith Academy is very visible and very strong. For example, both of them have a made-up dating system where, you know, the Sith talk about how it's year nine of the imp it's Imperial Year Nine, and the Order of the Nine Angles calls this shit fucking 130-something Year of the Feyan. Um, another similarity is referring to outsiders, or those who are not of their religious path as mundanes. Um, another similarity... The O9A's goal is to create a galactic imperium, and of course, the Sith Academy's goal is to create a real-life galactic empire. Both groups are pursuing the destruction of our society, um, and they believe that after this society is destroyed, they will be able to rebuild a new society which will pursue galactic conquest, which will live by, you know, their spiritual philosophy. One very interesting uh, similarity is the Antichrist fi figure who is prophesied to bring this about. The Order of the Nine Angles has Vindex, who will lead a uh, fucking armed revolution that will destroy society so that it can be made anew. And the Sith Academy has Darth Siluzon. Um, the Onine calls Vindex the Avenger, and the Sith Academy calls Darth Siluzon the Stormbringer. First of all, Sith Academy, why the fuck? does your Antichrist figure have the same nickname that I gave my dick in high school, you dorks. Um, but y this is when the ideology gets pretty fucking abrasive. So, the Sith describe themselves as questing to be, and I quote, supervillains of the galaxy. Um, Another excerpt said, Let it be prophesied that the Shith shall command the dark armies of this world, who shall topple the enemy's temples and slaughter them without mercy. Skipping forward, For this age of the Imperium will unleash a black poison upon the earth, and only those who were born with the dark gift of Force Mastery may drink of it and survive. Skipping forward some more, they, the mundanes, the non-Sith, will cower in fear only to inhale the black poison from the very air, the water and the earth at our command. This is our grand plan. It cannot be evaded. The book states that mankind will become the willing slaves of Sith Academy as fucking if. I will say the Sith Academy has put more thought into 
how their imaginary dystopia will function than any other uh, black magical world domination cult I've ever seen, and more thought than any other such cult into how it will come about, which again is both impressive and sad. And they genuinely seem to believe that this will come about. They believe they've had visions of this uh, future. <sighs> For the Sith shall seize all thrones of power and reign as tyrants and kings over mankind for untold centuries. Another quote, we claim all nations, all planets, all stars, they are ours. So yeah, we have a fucking Sith cult trying to take the fucking planet over, which is exactly what we don't need in 2020. One of the uh, Sith Academy's two YouTube videos has Darth Imperius going into detail about how he believes the uh, about different structures he is considering for this one world Sith government. And he speaks of his world domination plan with no passion whatsoever. He speaks about his fucking imaginary Star Wars conquest with the level of passion that I would speak about Kim Kardashian with. It's quite strange. Now, I have to wonder. I like the Sith as fictional characters, but they are very much space Nazis. Obviously, the aesthetics and weaponry of the Sith in Star Wars and their empire were fashioned after uh, Nazis, you know, stormtroopers being their emissaries. Stormtroopers were a name for certain types of Nazi soldiers. Um, and in the extended universe, the uh, ideology of the Sith was influenced deliberately by Mein Kampf, by Adolf Hitler. And the Sith Academy is very big fans of one, fictitious space Nazis, two, Friedrich Nietzsche, three, Ayn Rand, and four, the Order of the Nine Angles, which again is a, a white nationalist movement. So, both the founders are Caucasian. They have a picture of the fucking uh, Darth Silo Zoss, and he's fucking Caucasian. Is there a racial undertone to this? I'm not accusing, I'm asking. Is there a racial undertone? Because... You know, I don't want to wake up one day and turn on the news and see that some of y'all went and, you know, slaughtered the sand people. <laughs> no offense to the Middle East. I had to. <laughs> so, when I was watching Darth Imperius's most recent YouTube video, I actually took the time to do a psychic scan on him. So, from what I could see, and this was in 2019 that this video was made, so whether or not all this holds true still is unknown to me. What I saw is that, one, there was serious binding magic on this man. Another thing I noticed is that he had two ruptured chakras. His third eye and solar plexus had both been completely destroyed. So, I don't know who or what did that to him, but the Sith are getting handled out here. <laughs> uh, I hope it's one of those people who consider themselves real-life Jedi, because that'd be fucking funny. I don't know who the, who the Darth Imperius pissed off, but he took a real ass beating, and he isn't capable of sensing or healing it, or at least was not in 2019, because he uh, 
he uh, draws a black circle on his uh, fucking forehead to symbolize the black sun of the Sith current to uh, funnel the energy of the black sun into his third eye. And you can see that he was real, real proud of himself for that idea in the video, even though he can't draw a circle worth a shit and it was not centered at all on his forehead. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to his fucking third eye. He drew the shit wrong. <laughs> Fucked his own third eye up. Um, the black sun of the Sith religion appears not to be the same as, you know, for example, the black sun of Aztec cosmology, or the black sun of the Mayajirai and Black Heavens, or the black sun of Infernal Kabbalah. They felt the need to add another fucking black sun. The fucking concept of the black sun is so convoluted at this point, and these clowns had to fucking go and make that shit worse. I know seven versions of the black sun off the top of my head. If I find an eighth, I'm gonna fucking flip. You know what? If I find another black sun, I'll 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 slaughter them all. The women, the children, they're animals, and I'll slaughter them like animals. I hate them. But that that that's the end of this video. Aren't you glad I decided to split this into two parts? So my my message to Sith Academy in regards to your your quest for world dom domination it's treason then